The nickname for this shop is the Akuma Technology Center. Everybody knows it as the Akuma Shop. We were 100% a captive shop. We were doing all racing, about 50-50 mix of engine-related components and car-related components. And then we branched out into military, defense, as well as getting into the aerospace side. The Akuma set us up for success in that environment by the, uh, the quality of the machine as well as the service that we get after the sale, knowing that we can run you know, for years and years with minimal downtime and minimal maintenance requirements. On the outside military defense and aerospace stuff that we do, most of our stuff being prototype, their time to market is, is critical. We're a job shop and obviously there's a lot of job shops across the country. But then when you get into the complexity of the parts that we do, tight tolerance, a lot of different materials, um, and extremely difficult parts, and that's kind of one of the niches that we have fell into. Probably 50 to 60% of the stuff we see is a lot of stuff that other companies have already no quoted. So um, not only is the tolerance of the machine important, but also the quality of the machine and knowing that we're not gonna have any issues one of the great things with Akuma has been working with their applications engineers because we have things that come up that we've never seen before. With prototype work, we are constantly setting up machines and constantly doing something new. So you have those, those issues that come up and we try to minimize those, but it's nice to know that when we do have something come up that we, we're just, uh, all we have to do is make a phone call and, and it's taken care of. In the next next 10 years, I see automation really, really taking a hold on, on the industry. You do have to have a robust process, but once you've established that robust process and know kind of how the part's going to run and everything, really there's, there's no reason not to. It's getting more and more difficult to find skilled machinists. And then when you do find a really skilled machinist, they don't want to stand in front of a machine and, and just load material all day long. Yeah, you're going to need a skilled person, but one skilled person can tend to three or four machines and it's more productive for, for the shop. And it's also, in my opinion, it's a more rewarding career for the machinist as well. We have very skilled machinists on the floor as well as the programmers. All of our manufacturing engineers are previous machinists on the floor. And then all of the machinists that are on the floor, biggest majority of those guys have also been programmers previous. So they're very familiar with what it takes to get a part once we set out that we wanted Akuma machines, we kind of wanted to keep Akuma across the board. Having the Akuma machine, the ease of use and the, um, the, the layout of the control and everything lends itself very well to cross-training employees. Our MU6300 is the newest machine. We have several other five axis, but this one has a lot of bells and whistles. You know, we have combined a, a lot of experience here, you know, several hundred years of experience but we still run across these parts and situations that we can, we can call some of the applications people at Akuma or, or our distributor more south and run things by them and get very good feedback. We work really close with all of our partners to make sure that we get it right the first time. And then we're off to the next job, to the next part.